Yo, yeah, welcome back to the channel, guys. Nick, Adam's here. He's just about to walk off. Yeah. Uh, this is, from my previous video, a very low energy, low energy video. Uh, I need to say that because I'm tired, I'm ill. Adam's tired, Adam's also ill. And we've come to the extension. So the outhouse that we did ages ago with the spotlights that are in the, what was the hair studio? Is there, that's now finished. So this is the big extension I was on about. This is gonna be kitchen, dining room, not through from the old part of the house. So we're gonna be planning out and doing some, uh, there'll be six of the, I think we're gonna go for the JCCs. They're the, uh, the down lights, but they have the adjustable bracket. I'll put a picture on the screen now so we can flush fit them because the way these joists lay above me with the Veluxes, we wanna be sort of putting the down light, where's my finger, there, and the same matching across because in the center of this cross beam, which will be here, we're gonna do a, uh, a drop light there and a drop pendant there for an island unit. So we have got a lot of stuff in the way, which it is what it is. We're gonna sort of work around that. But the first job is we've left a massive coiler cable up in that bedroom up there. So we're gonna bring them down and sort of figure out a way because the builder hasn't finished removing stuff or whatever. But we're gonna try and bring our cables because it's gonna be a big void. It's gonna be blocked out and cap, cap the cables there. And for the kitchen, if we want to, we can run low level across either in some conduit or clip direct. It's all gonna be within on surface within regs anyway. So bring it round, we're gonna have the oven here. We've got a Ren kitchen plan on the iPad, which is down there. Larder unit, cooker, extractor. We've got a ring outside for the light to go up on the exterior up here. And then two outside lanterns, up and down lights, which is customer supplied. So come along for the journey. I put two days in for this because I'm messing around with bringing the stuff through, tidying up. It could be done in a day, but it's low energy, guys. It is low energy. And once again, this is a price job, not a day rate. There's a lot of people online that seem to struggle with the concept of when we go around people's houses, we always have permission to film. I've never filmed a video without permission. And then you get a lot of people going, oh, you know, how do you, you get away with filming and working? You're costing the, costing the customer money. I'm not. I'm not costing the customer, customer any more money than they're already paying me because the job gets done in the same time frame or more time frame, but the job costs the same. So chill out, bro. Right, I'm going to get some stuff out of the van and uh, I'll start pulling some Zellotex out of the ceiling. Ugh. I mean, I'm just going to start moving some heavy things around the room. Oh my God. <laughs> oh! God. <sighs> Thank you. That did my back a world of good. We've just gone around the customer. The plans have changed a bit because the builders haven't quite finished of this, that and the other. We've got a ring. I'm going to bring the ring one leg down here while they clip it back up within regulation height. Which is the first job I'm gonna do in a very, very long time where we're not gonna use oval conduit. We're gonna clip direct to the brickwork. We've got the cable stapler, the DeWalt one. It's thermalite block, so it will go in quite easily. The only thing we will sort of have to do it properly on is this wall, it's an original wall. We'll just yeah, we'll take some tiles off. You can see that it's been, oh, it is brick, bricks and plaster, and this is the old doorway from the old kitchen. We know what we're doing. We're just gonna do a lot of planning. We've just done a lot of planning work and we've got to go and get loads of stuff in. And we put the floor up. We found all the cables from previous. We've got a ring, we've got a smoke circuit, we've got a lighting circuit, and we've got a 10 mil for the cooker going in. So bear with us a second. Let's get some stuff in and out, shake it all about, and we'll be back in a minute. Right, so whilst Nick's cracking on for the kitchen, he's got the laser out. He's doing all the surface. Hello. Not surface, what's going on? Worked off. Yeah, Rockets. so we've got a couple going in. I think what we're going to do is sink the, the boxes to the brick, so I'll just chisel some plaster off. I think what we're going to do is drop them down, run them low level, and do it up, because this whole floor is being raised by another 150 mil, so... Yeah, quite a lot. Yeah, cool. Well, yeah, so what I'm doing is pulling in the old existing cables that we looped up in the floor. So this is our end point. So I've got three freshly, hold, freshly Fresh drilled hold. holes. Freshly drilled holes. Um, so that I've, I've done one, so that's the six mil, but I'll just take you through now to where we are going. So as you can see, look, this is where we did the rewire, so it's all bonded still, nice. Let me just go upstairs. So what I've been doing is drapes in the cables down the stairs, because we've got big bundles. So if I show you up here, got the rods out. So this is where we've got big bundles like, like that. So we took a bit, a good chunk of the floor up and we stuffed them under. 
because we knew the bathroom was getting done. I did originally take them that way, but then the customer told us, no, then we were going to take them from the bathroom because the bathroom, but then all the timeline, the timeline of the job changed. So then we're having to retake them back this way. Um, so we've got a six mil, a ring, and then the heat alarm for the kitchen. So what I'm doing is untaping them, trying to untangle them. Well, to be fair, I spent a lot of time and effort doing it nice and neat, so save me a bit of time now. And then rodding them across to here, which is there. And then we've already got, I already drilled the holes before. We've got a nice big, like 32 mil hole in the middle of the joist, which is perfectly fine. And then this here, these three little holes, as you can see there, is that end point, which I've showed you downstairs, which takes us into the new extension. So that's what I'm doing, it's a bit boring, just pulling the cables. Adam's doing a fabulous job bringing the cables down behind us. I touched the SDS on this wall. And now look at the mess I've got to clean up. All ready then. I'm gonna just go around putting these uh, chisels out a little bit. We're putting 35 mil back boxes on, which we normally do. Uh, I've just sunk them in enough where it's only 20 mil ex uh, exposed beyond the brick. So if the plasters wanna just dab straight onto it, then I can. They don't have to mess around with my stuff, you know, all that jazz, making it easy for them. Even though they make our life hell. Uh, was something else I was going to show you. Oh yeah, also, I keep getting a lot, a lot, a lot of questions. And the eagle-eyed viewers out there will see the tool bag that I designed with Velocity in the background in many shots, if you're keeping an eye out. It's not going to be released for a couple of months. This is the final design. I would point you at it. I'm not meant to show it you guys yet, but I will just give you a, a brief thing. For electricians, it's created for, you can use it in th amongst other trades. But it's designed what I would call a second fixed bag. It's got your usual stuff you keep in your pockets, plus a few extra little bits and bobs with a spirit level tape holder, that sort of stuff. But I designed it to be nice, lightweight, can be brought in for call outs, second fixing, a little odd job in that sort of stuff. So that's the little beauty there, designed by myself, um, continuity tester. Tape loop, I won't open it up, but it's nice and small enough that it's so light and easy to carry and you can like, put it anywhere, sort of thing. So I'm really happy with it, it looks gorgeous, gorgeous. But yeah, don't tell anyone I showed you because I'll get in trouble. Okay, we've chased a few things out, like we've said before, we've sunk them in, them in, that one in, this one in over here. Little change of plan for zoning wise, let me step back so we can get it all in. So initially, it's all, always, always a work in progress when you're going through sort of an extension or a new build or whatever, a rewire. There's boxing going in this corner. We're going to bring the cables up sort of like this to each socket, blah, 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 blah. The six mil was going to come all the way down, all the way around, up into an isolator within the cupboard, and then it'll come back down and into the cooker or hub or whatever's going to go here eventually. But because we've removed the plaster, because it literally just fell off, and this brickwork, if we run anything low level, if I put on the screen now, which will be the uh, zoning, cable zoning places in the on-site guide, you can see that it can run from in the corners at 150, horizontally, horizontally and vertically from an outlet or 150 mil from a ceiling. But that does not include floors. Most of the time it's because if skirting was to go on, a lot of the time now it's actually nailed on, so we don't want any nails going for any cables. So I think the only way we can do it is we're gonna use the zonings of the ceiling. Unfortunately, it's a very high ceiling for us. So Adam, three points of contact, please. The six mil and the cables for the sockets will return this way, but the six mil will come across, clip, clip, all the way down into the outlet it needs to be within the back of the cupboard. Uh, that outlet will then cover the zonings for going up. Realistically, I say realistically, visually, you would like it on the side to cover the, uh, the zonings for it, but we don't really like the look of kitchen cooker outlets for anyone like cooker isolations, isolation switches, so we do hide them in the cupboards quite a lot. I'll ask the customer what they want to do. With the socket wise, what we're going to do, we'll come down to this one, bring it down within the zones. There'll be an outlet here, which is going to be a socket under the sink for the dishwasher, which is going to be here. It will then run across, back up into this one, across to this double socket, across into this few spur, and then they will both disappear upwards. The cable for the extractor fan will come up a right angle to a single unswitched socket behind the extractor. The leg from the socket will continuously go up all the way across, back down to this one, and the return will then go back up across the length, all the way back over to this socket here. We could take all the Celotex out and drill every single joist, but that would be a way of getting from this leg all the way to this leg, 
but the fact that we're all going to be going across. I could can change all this again, but as the job progresses, things change and we have to adapt to it. I'm going to get the sockets in first, the cooker in, the smoke's already in place where it needs to be, which is the heat alarm within the kitchen environment. And then we're going to start doing some, some lighting afterwards. Outside lights, under cab lights, pendant lights, spotlights, and... The ring thing. Yeah, and the ring camera, which is there. We've got all the boxes in now. We decided to go for the 47mm patches in the wall to cover our zonings coming down because if we get someone, let's say even a kitchen fitter and the kitchen cabs are, uh, the lower level cabs are already in, and then we'd have no idea really that there's going to be a big cable going in here. So we thought, right, we suppose the customer, it's an extra single socket on there, but because the depth of it is blowing the back of the brick out. So this looks like a dog's dinner, but we wouldn't framed it all back. So it's nice and solid to the wall, equal distance between them. But I thought for the plaster's sake, I've just put a bit of brick back in so we can put some gob on, some, some muck on there. Gob, muck, plaster, whatever you want to call it. It's got something to hold to, but what we will do is go and chuck some either CT1 or some silicon just to hold this in place. Um, so it's just less plaster, less stuff for the plaster to do. Because realistically, this is all going to be dabbed over anyway, boarded, and the board should be cut clean with this. So none of this will be seen, but this is real world, this is what happens. And hey ho, we made the best of a bad situation. Adam is now marking out our lines up where we're going to be clipping to. Um, we obviously want to go in with the 150 mil of the corner of this to be dropping down. We've just marked out our under cab lights, which the under cab are very tall units as well. So from here, and they literally come all the way up to here. That does not look. We just had a little little coffee break. Delicious. A little cheeky that in. Oh, uh. cable has been brought through for the ring here. I'm not filming loads of stuff because there is a lot to get on with. Bringing it down, it's going to be clipped in this box in, around. We're cable clipped, so as you'll notice, like I said earlier, we're not putting in any oval. I'm going to give this one a go. So it's been years since I've just clipped direct. I've always put it in some form of containment. There's no regulation that it needs to be within any conduit, Talking capping, well. anything like that. It's been in the wall, it's RCD protected. We've got a new fuse box that we fitted here, uh, RCBA board, everything's covered. So we've got our zonings. I fixed my mess that I made here with the brick. So we use a massive amount of CT1, which is the here, you can get it online, and these sort of whole electrical wholesaler stocks it. It, it is banging in it. It yeah. really is. I've gunked it up and what I've done just to blend it in a little bit, let's say, is just get some of the brick dust off the floor and just sort of blowing it onto the top of it. That'll go off nice and hard. It was already solid in the wall, it'll just give it a bit of uh, sturdiness. Sturdiness, sturdiness um, in and around makes it look it's a bit really better. Just it a bit around the edge of the box. Yeah, just getting it nice and strong around. Uh, this is all clipped around to our zonings, so everything is in horizontal or vertical to our points, and then we've got it up here. Oh, and then this one's coming down to the Fr socket in the cupboard for fridge freezer socket, and then it's going to return back up. And then we're talking about zonings constantly, so there's a few ways that we can return. I know I said this earlier. We can either come all the way back, which we might do, and then back across to this socket, which is a very long run in and around. I think we'll do that because we'll bring the 6mm. Because we've got to bring the 6mm down as well, which yeah. we'll film and show you. We're using the cable stapler. Or we can come back up from this socket. And realistically, there's, within regulations, this piece of timber coming across and down, that is within regulations as well. From the ceiling, 150. I'm not too happy about doing it. I would never say anyone would drill anything there. These don't need to be fixed back yet, mate. I never thought anyone would drill anything there, but I think, just of common sense, I don't think that's the best way that I could run it across. It would be the easiest way by far, uh, but we're gonna have to take some Celotex out in a little bit anyway to drill above it for our lighting cables. So I think it would make sense we just drop a few, we can drill that up and over, and then it will save us returning it all the way around because to do our zonings, we'll have to bring the cables all the way up and then back round. So, but we'll put the camera on the side and we're going to put the 6mm in now for the cooker, which is here. We'll feed that through. We'll just finish this off here. We'll clip this down and around into this first socket and then we'll drop the 6mm. Good thing about these steps. So, annoyingly, we've just had the discussion off camera for Adam. Just about to see me. Even though this is a massive empty wall above the wall units, to be within zones, it still has to be within 150mm of the top of the roof. So we're going to bring the 6mm up, clip it across, bring it across, bring it down where we need to. So it's one of them. If you were to put, and I've done this years ago, if you were to put a access box, so a patch in the wall, like we did with the EV charger, 
and allow the cables to run through it. So above here, we could do that and run the Sixma through it, but you would just have a blank plate above the cupboard. If you were to, to measure it right, you could do it just above the top of the cupboard. So if you stand down here, you wouldn't see it, but we've got loads of length on it. We'll get it up, show everyone for camera wise. I'm not saying I know everything and there's a lot of people that comment constantly on different websites and things. We never come across, I never say, oh, this is how you should do it. This is how we do it. There's a big difference. I'm never telling anyone how to do things because I'm the last person that would want to tell people how to do stuff. It's just stuff I've picked up over the years and yeah, we I think, think it's quite competent. Well, like, the brakes, like, it, they're not statutory, are they? So it's like, no, it's, it's, everyone interprets differently. Yeah, they? I just put it as a grey area. It's, yeah. there's, 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 it's the way you interpret the regulations. Um, a lot of people interpret that you have to put cap in an oval or anything on the wall metal for protection, but the only protection that would give is from a plasterer's trowel. That is it. It's never going to stop a screw going through the wall, a nail through the wall, anything. Most of the time when we do it, it won't even help you to pull new cables through. It's just protection from the plasterer, gives and us a good fixing. Like yeah, and it's so we can clip it nice and neat. And aesthetically, it looks great, but obviously once it's been boarded, no one knows what's under there. So I wanted to give it a try with a cable stapler on that, uh, these type of bricks, where already it's 10 times quicker, isn't it? The materials are cheaper. I say the materials are cheaper, but these, these staple dudes cost a lot of money. Let's get on with the work, sorry. Um, you need to bring that here, dude. You've yeah. got the clips, grab the hammer, and I'll feed that up and over to you. Yeah, I, to be fair, I, need, I could do with you bringing it in on the angle here and let me clip it up this wall and around, if you know what I'm saying. Right, you got the hammer and the clips there, mate. I've got the hammer. Reason I'm big. Yeah, it's, just give us the whole tub and I'll clip it on my trousers. Trousers. It's a good thing about these velocity boxes, which you've all seen us use before, as they come with the little, uh, I don't need loads, mate, it's only for this bit. They come with uh, the detachable pods that have a clip on it and a lid. Yeah, drop one. Thanks. You got the hammer? You got the hammer. Yeah. So the good thing with this is, especially with all our work trousers, you can clip onto your pocket, open it up, or if you're concerned that stuff's gonna fall out. This is a lot easier. So what Adam's doing here is he's taking the weight of the cable to allow me to clip it and bend it. Make life a little easier, isn't it, mate? Yeah. Right, we can use the cable stapler now. Yeah, right, just grab the cable stapler. Yeah, mate, give me this to you. Give this to you. Yeah, I've got this corner. I've got this corner. All our zonings in and around. Just put the structure of the cable stick, I'm just going to put one more in. Just hold it down. Ooh. Adam, you should be wearing eye protection for this. Oh no. You're going to see in the video me going. Sweet. Here we are. So it's our zones going up, straight from the outlet. Sweet, we've got enough here as well to. We roll that up, that'll be enough for us to go down to our wedge for our cooker at some point as well. Oh, oh yeah, put now. it in place now, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll bring it out, so that one's done. But you can see how much quicker, quicker that was on a Thermalite board with just the cable stapler. All within regulations, all within zonings. Let me know, because I, like I said before, I like to do conduit, no more conduit. Yeah, we've got to do loads of bits of odds, but it's the same thing repeated for you guys, so I won't bore you with that, but are you happy with that? I mean, I suppose if you're on price work, job and knock, I can imagine like you will want to just get it in, get it done. But we've always prided ourselves on doing as neat and as tidy as possible, even if you don't see it. So hence why we hoover under floorboards sometimes. Right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, this is, it's nearly two o'clock, but it's my eldest's birthday. It's in this, it's not six weeks holidays, it's Easter half term. So it's his birthday today, so we're going to knock it on the head a little bit early because we've got family coming over and bits and bobs. So uh, we've got the sockets all in and done. We've got the, the six mil in and done. We've got all our zonings across the top. What I did was measure out from the ceiling, 150 down. We did a pencil line, which I don't think you can see on the GoPro. Um, but we've got all them going across. 
How do I think about it, if I'm being completely honest? I prefer our old way, but I can see the benefits of how quickly this has been thrown in. You might say, some may say, what? You've not got a lot done today, guys. Well, we've been talking, the customer's awesome, by the way, so she, she keeps coming in and having a chat with us. We're trying to work around all this, and the plan keeps changing every five seconds. So instead of taking the Solitex arc across and drilling, the leg that came from here, so one leg of the ring went this way, the other leg of the ring went this way, it was more than enough. So we brought the leg straight down to here. We've come back across and then that leg now has been joined all the way across and up and over down to Adam. Uh, there's no spurs off anything. Everything is on the ring. Uh, the sockets below for the dishwasher. Yeah, the socket down. below there for the fridge and the freezer. And uh, I know a lot of people have been commenting recently. The sound's better. When we're doing littler videos like this, I'll just use the one mic. So you've just got me. And a lot of appreciate a lot of people saying on the dual mics with me and Adam, Adam and I, uh, I need to sync them up properly so you get the same sound out of both speakers. So apologies right. for that. Yeah, not left and right. Apologies for that. But it's getting better and better. And this one should be crystal clear like the one we did the other week. So um, drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And we will film tomorrow doing the lights through the Salatex and the sort of things we're going to be using. So we'll see you tomorrow. Take care now. Bye-bye then. Bye.